I'd like to welcome you to my channel and today's discussion is called Christianity in MGTOW. MGTOW stands for Men Going Their Own Way. When I started reading online articles and watching videos on men's rights and men's issues, I came across this acronym and ideology. MGTOW philosophy is basically like this. Men live in their lives as they see fit. MGTOWs don't go the traditional route of marriage and family, but not all are like this, so it's a varied range of men and ideas. They aren't anti-family nor anti-female, but there are exceptions to the rule of course. Basically, MGTOW men live for themselves and don't adhere to a strict, traditional lifestyle. Most married men tend to do whatever their spouse tells them to do, but MGTOWs don't believe that way. Even Christian men who call themselves traditionalists let women rule over them today. But look at the church. Who runs the church today? Women, of course. And we as Christians who read and study the Bible know that is not God's plan. The Apostle Paul doesn't even allow women to preach or to teach. But yet today we have women in charge of almost every job position in society, including the home. MGTOW men don't believe that men and women um, should live like this. They should be equal partners in a relationship. And the Christian viewpoint is that the man should be the head of the house. But unfortunately, it's more like the women being the head of the house for most families today. So what's my view on marriage and singleness from my Bible knowledge? I believe that the Bible teaches men that we all have a choice to marry or not marry. Despite the opposition from traditionalists and religious people in the evangelical communities, when so-called Christian people start saying that men have an obligation to marry, that is when I part company with such people. There is no such verse in the Bible that says you must get married. Those that say this are taking the Word of God out of context and are lying. These people are heretics and they have their own agenda for pushing such nonsense, namely making money. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and see what the Apostle Paul has to say about singles and singleness. Paul was single and even told others to say, stay single as well. Of course we all know that singleness is not for everybody, and like Paul said, that if you can't handle yourself, that is, if you can't keep yourself sexually pure, with staying and keep yourself from having sex with women, you need to get married. Secular MGTOW men have other views, viewpoints on this subject about sex, um, different than what I have as a Christian. I believe sex is for marriage, and if, if you are single, you should stay celibate until you do get married. I would like to add here that I am not a misogynist. That means I do not hate women, nor am I gay, nor am I socially inept, ugly, or fat. I don't hate anyone. 1 John 4.20 says, If a man says that he loves God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he, is, whom he has seen, cannot love God whom he has not seen. I just happen to enjoy being single. I'm single and celibate because that is what I believe according to my Bible knowledge. As a Christian, I want to please my Savior, Jesus Christ. I do, however, have a problem <clears throat> with so-called Christian pastors, writers, and Christian people who demand that singles, Christian singles, must be married and claim that the Bible mandates that all men should be married. There is no passage in the Bible that states that marriage is demanded or expected by God. Anyone that tells you that is a liar and a heretic and probably has their own agenda for saying those kinds of things. I don't think the Apostle Paul would have had a problem with the concept of MGTOW since he was not married. There is one aspect of the MGTOW philosophy that I don't agree with, which is proposed by some in the movement, and that is the idea that men are not accountable to anyone but themselves. As a Christian, I believe I have a responsibility to love and care for other people. 1 John 4, 7 through 11 says, Beloved, let us love one another, for God is of, for love is of God. I'm sure many MGTOWs feel the same way as I do, but there are some extremists in the movement 
and are almost hermits in their nature and beliefs. I truly don't believe any man is an island to himself. Common sense and self-preservation, of course, also plays, plays a part in the MGTOW philosophy. I agree that no man wants to be a slave to another human being. One of the reasons many men are MGTOW is because uh, they have married the wrong person. They have married entitled, unreasonable, and selfish women. Modern marriage today, unfortunately, has become a sham. Biblical marriage ordained of God is the only true form of marriage. But in the mid-20th century, the government co-opted the church as the arbiter of marriage. Two hundred years ago, marriage was simple and godly. You had a religious ceremony, and you made a public commitment to your spouse before God and witnesses, and that was it. There was no legal binding document we call a marriage license. Most of the time, what they did was just sign their names in the family Bible, and that was it. There was no legal binding document between you and the state. Now, every person who marries has to sign a legal document that is legally binding. This marriage contract is between the man, the wife, and the state. I'm sorry, but the state is a very bad bedfellow. I understand that there were some men in the past who abused women and their children by abandoning them in their fatherly responsibilities. They ran it off and didn't support the wife and the children. This is wrong, but then the state took over and began to abuse this, their power. Do your own research and find out how the state abuses its power over men today. There are many abuses of men by our corrupt, vile, evil, greedy government. Men have been forced to pay outrageous alimony to women, some to the point of bankruptcy, and some men are forced to pay outrageous alimony and child support, were and are still incarcerated because they couldn't pay it. So now we have homeless, bankrupt men because of our corrupt divorce courts and judicial system. These men are basically indentured servants of the state. There are many other laws that strip men of basic civil rights as well. The state makes these rules to steal wealth from men to give to others. Nine times out of ten, only the women get custody of the children, and even the grandparents have zero rights and access to their grandchildren. The courts are biased against men in every arena. Rape and sexual abuse cases are rife with unsubstantiated lies of women being raped and the men are wrongfully accused up to 80% of the time. Guys can go to jail just by a lie from a female. And read about the corruption from the VAWA, that's the Violence Against Women's Act, from 1992, I believe was the year. Whatever happened to presumed innocent? It doesn't exist anymore. I don't blame it completely on feminism. Femini feminism is just a symptom. Feminism was developed by the elitist, ungodly, vile Rockefeller banker family in association with the CIA to destabilize society to help bring about the corrupt bankers' new world order. They tricked women into believing that being a wife and a mother was a form of slavery and that they should be just like men. No one thinks women should be treated like second-class citizens, but that was what women were indoctrinated to believe. The CIA and Gloria Steinem brainwashed the population into believing that men were perpetrators of evils over women and that women were victims. And that is being taught in our school system at every level today from elementary school to college level. So of course the, the main culprit of this horrific abuse of power was created by design by our own federal government. Everyone in power knows that it is men who are the strongest of the two sexes. It is men who go to war, and men who stand up to injustice. What better way to keep the people under your thumb than to create unjust and bigoted laws against men to make sure there are as few men as possible that are able to stand up against a tyrannical government? I believe our government is the most evil, tyrannical government on this earth, even worse than North Korea. Of course, you might laugh and say, how is that possible? We don't have mass executions. No, not yet. The American people at the moment are armed. 
Once they figure out how to get rid of our guns, our leaders will then make Ken Jun Un look like a choir boy. Look how recently our First Amendment rights are being chipped away. For instance, the IRS scandal of targeting conservative groups who disagree with the establishment is a prime example of tyrannical abuse of power. Our president continues to ignore the Constitution and makes laws via executive order. Will Congress stand up against such abuses of power, or will they continue to go along with it? Hm, who knows? So you may ask, what's the point of all the political comments? I'm trying to show how that our government is out of control and that men are under attack by corrupt, evil politicians. And you wonder why men aren't getting married? Not only do you have to deal with the entitled bossy females, if they get mad at you and file for a no-fault divorce, they get half of what you uh, what you've made, whether they help you make it or not. You are then at the mercy of the women and the corrupt government, a corrupt system that can that can uh, change the marriage and divorce laws at a whim to benefit them, the fat cats in D.C. Prenuptial agreements now are invalid in many states. Decent men will want to take care of their children. But if the ex-wife is a vindictive person, she can use the present corrupt legal system to strip her ex-husband of all his parental rights with one lie. These cases of women lying about their ex-husband sexually abusing the child or abusing her, she can, um, she can put him in prison out of sheer spite. Some judges in our legal system are so corrupt that they accept bribes by the highest bidder in court. Putting men in jail is also big business today. The government makes money on incarcerating men. Do some research online and find out how. You will be shocked at how this is done. That is just a little info on the abuses of our system. That is why there are so many guys who just don't want to get married and deal with such a corrupt, biased, abusive system. The government is now seeing the handwriting on the wall. They're beginning to realize that if fewer men get married and have kids, that means less tax money coming in for them. We, we all know that married people make more money and spend more money than single people do. They can't have that, so that's why they're egging on and funding the feminist and the pseudo-conservatives to write books and yammering on television about how men are man boys and don't want to get married and don't want to man up. Feminism, feminism is failing. Women are still women. They can't deny human nature, despite all the indoctrination. Women want to have babies and still want relationships. Men are, are wising up to the corruption and manipulation by the government. Some women are waking up too, but still not enough to make a difference. Christians and conservatives still want to shame men to get married because it's what a man's supposed to do. Really? So it's your job to tell men what their duties are? Sorry, but as a man, I am the only one who can tell me what my duties are besides God. Like I already said, it's not a man's job or responsibility to get married if he doesn't want to. I guess they like dictatorships. I don't. Besides, they are really... That many living in their mother's basements playing video games instead of working? Come on, let's get real. I don't know any slackers like this. Not saying that there aren't any, but I don't personally know any guys like this. I don't know guys that, I do know guys that uh, can't get a decent paying job because the economy is so freaking bad because of all the stupid, idiotic government policies that kill jobs. They're sending all the decent paying jobs overseas. Let's use some common sense here now. We all know it costs money to get married and have a family. And if you <laughs> and if all you can get is a minimum wage job making about eight bucks an hour, how in the world are you going to be able to support a family? Let's wake up and smell reality, shall we? Other conservatives and some liberals claim that if men don't man up and get married soon, society is going to fall apart. Really? What a bunch of hooey. Sure, if guys don't get married and have kids, 
we will have a shortage of future taxpayers to help prop up our present corrupt political system, I guess. <laughs> Many men in the MGTOW community have no desire to prop up our corrupt system that hates men, discriminates against them, and abuses them. Let's call it what it really is, a corrupt socialist government that wants to control and manipulate everyone and everything. Socialism is just one step closer to communism, and that's the next step our government wants want to uh, perpetrate on the population. The premise of communism is that everyone is equal, but we all know that's a lie. We are equal under the law, but not equal in abilities, intelligence, and in other areas. It's wrong to steal from hard-working people and give to low-life lazy bums. And that's what our government is doing. And I'm saying all women, I'm just saying there are some women who sit at home and watch TV and pop out babies with their low-life boy toy boyfriends and get free money from the government. The men aren't allowed to stay and be a real father to their kids. If they do stay, the women can get that welfare check. They're allowed three, I think that's the correct number, before they're cut off. At least that was the last figure I read. Email let me know if the figure is wrong. Christianity or the Bible should never be used as an excuse to force men or anyone to get married. If you're an adult, you should take care of yourself. Unless you're disabled in some way and can't work. Don't you know that the Bible says that if you don't work, you don't eat? That's socialism at the core. If you're an able-bodied person, male or female, you are an adult, you should look after yourself and work. Some evangelicals but um, enjoy misusing the Bible here. Sorry, but uh, besides, uh, have you ever read Proverbs 31? Read it sometimes. That lady isn't sitting at home watching television. She's a hard worker. She knows about business. Actually, she's an entrepreneur, and she also takes care of her family. She will survive and probably even thrive if her husband were to die. All this scaremongering about MGTOW or dest destroying society and civilization is stupid. How can a small number of men not getting married and not having kids cause society to implode overnight? There are well over 7 billion people on this earth now. I don't think the human race is going to go extinct anytime soon, do you? Besides, look at all the immigrants coming into our nation who, if they are legal, they pay taxes. There are millions each year. There are two things I disagree with as far as my stance on the MGTOW philosophy. One is the, the view of MGTOWs is that they, some MGTOWs, not everybody, feel they have no responsibility to others. I disagree with that. And two, I don't like all the female bashing that some of the guys constantly engage in. If you're really going your own way, let it go and do your own thing and stop complaining about women. Let them do their own thing too. Just ignore them. I will not be posting videos complaining about women. I post videos condemning false doctrines and bigotry, but that is not the same thing. That's a different subject. I believe in the value and dignity of all people, especially men, so some of the societal expectation placed on men are wrong. There are even some so-called Christian women who place unrealistic expectations upon men. There are, however, some in the movement that go to extremes and separate themselves from society and claim they have no responsibility for anyone but themselves. This is where Christianity and I both part company with MGTOW people. Of course, these are extremes, extreme people. I agree that women should not rule over men, and men should not be dictators over women either. The issue I have with MGTOW people in this particular area is that we all have a responsibility to each other. I agree that society puts way too much pressure on men to be providers and protectors and goes so far as making men second-class citizens. In some cases, men are forced to be cannon fodder by force of law. However, if we truly love the Lord and each other, we're going to help each other and care for one another. And, of course, we do have responsibility to take care of ourselves, because if we don't, how can we help others? Let me give some examples here. Here's where MGTOWs and I do agree. 
If you're an adult, you should act like an adult and be treated like an adult. Feminism was supposed to be about empowering women, but now it's about turning women into infants and or victims. Women want the same rights and privileges as men, but when it comes to taking responsibility, many fall short. In the legal realm, I find it quite horrific how a man and a woman can both commit the same crime and yet the female gets an extremely light sentence. People, namely the judge, will feel sorry for the woman commute and commute her sentence. How is that fair and leak and equal? Is she not an adult too? How come she can't woman up and take her punishment just like the man? Why do women play the victim card and blame someone else for their actions and men are, aren't allowed to? Isn't it time to be an adult now? Another example is the unrealistic expectations some women have about men and place on men to be protectors. If you truly are a strong and independent woman, how come you can't learn to protect yourself? For example, last year there was this article in the Philadelphia newspaper about a lady who complained that the men in her area were not around to help protect her and her girlfriend when they went to a club in the early morning hours. This lady went to a club in Philly and left around 3 a.m. Some thug attacked her and stole her pocketbook. Actually, there was a string of attacks in the early morning hours, and this lady was complaining that the men were failing the women by not being around to help protect them. Really, come on. What decent person is running around in a big city like Philly at 3 a.m.? Most decent people are in bed. The only kind of women running around at 3 a.m. are sluts and prostitutes. There are only two types of men out at 3 a.m. Working guys who work a late shift and thugs. So basically this lady is saying that men, that is any random guy, is supposed to be her personal bodyguard slave and should drop whatever he's doing and go help her out. That's so pathetic and laughable. What an entitled little princess we have here. Unfortunately, there are way too many narcissistic entitled little princesses in today's society, and MGTOW men are against this kind of behavior of women. I agree that this is ridiculous. Why do these ladies, why don't these ladies buy a gun and take it with them when they are out and about alone in the early morning hours, or learn self-defense? What are they, two years old or something? Who do they think they are that they can demand some random guy to be their personal bodyguard? It's high time on these so-called ladies grow up and be responsible adults. In the Christian arena, some would misuse the following verse. 1 John 3.16 This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. Some evangelicals will misuse this verse to say that it's men who are required to voluntarily give their life for women and others. But if you do the proper exegesis of these verses from the original language by using a lexicon, the English word we is gender neutral. John is saying that any believer, male or female, should be willing to give their life for others. So to say only men are required to just voluntarily give up their life for others is both sexist and heretical. Some men may or not may or may not be physically able to help others in dangerous situations. For example, if a man is disabled, can he help physically protect others? Of course not. Is the man's wife weak as a kitten? Come on now, some women are very physically strong. Besides, they can get a gun and protect others. Ladies can learn to shoot and take self-defense classes. Notice in this verse, 1 Timothy 5, 8, in 9. In this passage, a widow is to be put on the list only if she is not less than 60 years old. You can imply here that the female who is under 60 should be strong enough to do labor, physical labor, that is needed to take care of her physical needs. This verse contradicts the poor little helpless girl syndrome many evangelicals place on women. Women are not weak little babies that need men to take care of them of their every need. They can do some things for themselves, can't they? Like work for a living? They don't need to get married and have a man bring the, the money home. They can do that for themselves, can't they? So in conclusion, 
I believe that MGTOW is compatible with the Bible as long as you don't get into the extremist fringe region where you become a hermit and don't want to have anything to do with other people. For the most part, I don't think most MGTOW men are this way. The only reason I don't call myself a MGTOW is because I don't like labels. I don't want to be called anything but a single Christian man who is an individualist. As an individual, I do what I think is right according to my Bible knowledge and my own personal beliefs. Thank you for watching my video. Have a good day and God bless.